There's many different ways that people can get involved with the Mammal Society. You can help out on projects like the Small Mammal Trapping Project. So I've had volunteers from across the UK going out, catching um, small mammals in metal longworth traps, and you set them out in grids, and essentially when you mark the animals that you capture and then release them again when you capture them again the next day it helps us to infer what the population size is and therefore what the density is in that area and that's just data that we're just massively lacking from across the country in lots of different habitats. Small mammals are a really important part of our ecosystem and this is where we do rely on our volunteers to help us so this is how you can get involved. You don't necessarily need to have the skills so you can come on our training courses and learn how to do small mammal trapping. You can also join a local group and they can help you out and teach you how to trap as well. So what sort of uh, mammals can we survey with a longworth trap? They're absolutely brilliant for catching bank voles, which you tend to find in this sort of environment, oddly enough, banks, so hedgerow bottoms, those sorts of places. They can also be used for field voles. You tend to find field voles more in long grassland um, or in upland habitats. They're good for mice, so we've got yellow net mice and wood mice. Wood mouse is actually one of our most common species. They're great for shrews. When you're trapping, it's really important that you number your traps in a sequential way. The exact spacing of the traps depends rather on the availability of traps and also um, what exactly your project questions are. So the more accurate you want to be about your population estimate, the more traps you're going to want to put out. So often you might use a trap where you have uh, 40 or 50 traps set out in a grid. Or along here, choose something like 10 traps in a row, spaced 10 metres apart. We've put some oats, some carrots, so the animal has moisture through the night, and a bit of peanut butter on some bread. We put it on bread because otherwise the peanut butter gets all over the trap and makes a horrible mess to clean it. And then on top of that goes a nice big handful of hay. And then we have to attach the two parts of the Longworth trap together. So this lip here goes underneath the flap. And then the bottom part hooks between these two sets of lugs there. And then when that's in position, we push the top lever and now it's all secure. And when we place the trap, we want the, this part of the Longworth trap, the tunnel, to be roughly flat on the ground with the nest box sloping downwards. And that means if it rains or the animal urinates, then the moisture drains out of the Longworth trap. The other thing we can do is we could actually clip open the tunnel here and give the animal a chance to get used to the trap. So there's a little catch here and if we pull that open and put the lid up and now put the catch back now the um, the door of the trap is locked into position and it's not going to go off if the animal is exploring it so that's really useful if you're doing a, a formal survey of a, of a site because it gives the animals a chance to get used to the trap they'll go in they'll normally we wouldn't put bedding in at this stage but they go in and eat the food get used to the trap the new object in their environment. And then when we're ready to trap, we take the, uh, the latch off again, and now the, um, the door is ready to move. Okay, so if I were trapping on a, on a verge like this, I wouldn't want to put the trap right on the, on the edge, mainly because it's going to be very visible to passers-by and might be disturbed by dogs and so on. So I'm going to put it back into the verge. And if you open up the grass or the underground vegetation, you can often actually see where there's runs of small mammals. Uh, sometimes you might even find little piles of droppings. And I'm going to put that down so it's not rocking around. Sometimes you might need to put in a, a little peg or something to stop it tipping over. Be particularly careful if you're working alongside a, a river bank or other waterway, because sometimes the uh, traps can shift and you don't want them rolling into the water. Okay, and then the final stage is really to hide your trap. You can take handfuls of vegetation and just cover it over and that has the 
dual benefit of it, it hides your trap and stops it from disturbance, but also it means that it, the whole object is now smelling and looking much more like something that the animal is familiar with having in its territory. What you want to do is make sure that you close the bag around the trap. So what we have here is a bank hole. And I know it's a bank hole because it's got chestnut coloured fur on the back and quite a long tail proportionate to its body. Um, and it's a lactating female, I can actually see her nipples down there. So should we weigh her? This and many other ways of getting involved can be found at mammal.org.uk.